Hi you guys, so this is going to be an example for um, the work and kinetic energy of rotation. Um, I apologize in advance, my allergies are going insane. So if I'm like sneezing or <laughs> sniffling, that's why. Um, so we have let the disc in figure 10-19 start from rest at time t, and also let the tension in the massless cord be six newtons and angular acceleration of the disc be negative 24 radians per second. The only reason that's a negative number for the angular acceleration is because if you see where that mass is going to go downward and therefore the um, rotation is going to be clockwise. So we know that clockwise rotation means a negative acceleration, angular acceleration or just negative angular displacement, negative angular velocity, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's why we have a negative 24 radians per second. Um, again, it's just a notation. You could use positive 24 in your calculations, um, and then down would, downward would be positive as well. And it says, what is its rotational kinetic energy? K at T equals 2.5 seconds. And then I have R equals 0.2 meters on there for the radius. Um, that was from a previous part of this problem that was in the book, um, and we need that. <laughs> so I made sure to put that on there so that we can do this problem. So um, we know that we start from rest at time T equals zero. So that means our initial angular velocity is zero. And then it says the tension in the massless cord is six newtons. So tension force is six newtons. And then we also know angular acceleration of the disc is a negative 24 meat, no, not meters per second squared. What are you doing, Mrs. Stewart? Radians per second squared. And then the rotational kinetic energy at 2.5 seconds. So we want to know 2. Point, whoops. <laughs> 2.5 seconds. What is the kinetic energy? Now, when we're talking about rotational kinetic energy, um, we know that kinetic energy is equal to one half I omega squared, where I is our rotational inertia and omega is our angular velocity. Now, with this information, we could find the final angular velocity. So um, if we knew how to get rotational inertia, I, we could use this method to find kinetic energy. However, they don't give us the mass of the disk. Now, because they don't give us the mass, it's going to be a little bit more complicated to find that rotational inertia because we know that the rotational inertia of a disk is equal to one half m r squared. So if it was that simple, it would just be a kinetic energy calculation. However, because it's not this simple, we can use the work kinetic energy theorem to find our final kinetic energy at t equals 2.5 seconds. Now this is doable to just use this and find that kinetic energy at that time t, um, but it just takes a little bit longer. And I can show you how to do that at the end of this problem. Okay, but we are going to use a different method because, again, we don't know the mass of the disk, so it's not as simple as it might seem to be. Now, we know from the work kinetic energy theorem that work is equal to a change in kinetic energy. And be careful here, this is work, not um, angular velocity. It's a W also, so it looks very similar. Um, I can write it as, like, a more uh, angular W. <laughs> angular though. Anyway, <laughs> um, so we know work is equal to change in kinetic energy. And of course, we want the final kinetic energy and we know initial has to be zero because it's not rotating initially, right? It has zero angular velocity initial. So that means that whatever work is done on this disk, this pulley, um, that's going to be equal to our kinetic energy, which is what we want to find. <clears throat> now, I want you to think of the rotational analog for the work equation here. Um, so we know that work is equal to force times displacement. Of course, when we're talking about linear, it's times the cosine of theta. But when we're talking about angular work or rotational work, um, force, that analog is torque, and our displacement is our delta theta, our angular displacement. So that will be equal to the um, kinetic energy, which is what we're trying to find. Now here, the torque on the object is just going to be the radius of that pulley um, and then times the tension force, because we know that 
torque is moment arm times force times a sine of theta, but of course theta here is 90 degrees. So sine of 90 degrees is just one. So we end up getting for torque R times T, radius times tension force. And then of course for that delta theta, our change in angular position or angular displacement, we can just use um, rotational kinematics in order to find that. Um, now the quickest way, we know the initial, um, let's look at our givens really fast. <clears throat> So we know that the angular acceleration is a negative 24 radians per second. We know that our initial angular velocity is um, zero. And then we also know that the time is 2.5 seconds. So the way that we want to do that is use our second basic equation. Because we know this whole term is zero. And then now we can easily find our angular displacement. We get one half times a negative 24 radians per second squared times T, which again was 2.5 seconds, yeah, squared. So plugging that all into my calculator, I end up getting a negative 75 radians for that. Okay, and then um, with this, I'm going to plug that in for my delta theta. Now, of course, again, um, for torque, I'm going to plug in R times T. So we can plug in all our numbers now to find kinetic energy. So kinetic energy ends up being radius, which was 0.2 meters, tension force, which was 6 newtons, times our angular displacement, which was 75 radians. Now, the reason that I put 75 instead of negative 75 is because um, we really, I'm finding like the energy of the system. Um, the only reason that's a negative 75 again is because we're going clockwise. So plugging that into my calculator, I end up getting 90 joules for my kinetic energy. Now, like I said, you can do this a different way. Um, we can use one half I omega squared but it's a little more bit more complicated because we don't know what mass is however we do know um, that torque is equal to i times alpha that's our new newton second law um, in rotation form we also know that torque is equal to our moment arm times our um, tension force so we can set these things equal to each other we get i times alpha equals radius times tension force. So I ends up being radius times tension force divided by our angular acceleration. We can then plug that in for this I right here. We get kinetic energy equals one half times radius times tension divided by alpha times omega squared. So we should get the exactly the same thing. So one half radius was 0.2 meters times tension, six newtons, time, oh, sorry, divided by alpha, which was a negative 24 uh, radians per second squared. And then omega, we know the initial omega, but we have to find final to plug that in here because really we're finding final kinetic energy. So this is omega final, and of course omega final is going to be omega initial plus acceleration times time, angular acceleration times time. So omega final here will be a negative 24 radians per second squared times our 2.5 seconds. Omega final ends up being a negative 60 radians per second. So plugging that in here, I'm running out of room. And then I square that. So 60 squared, <clears throat> um, and then multiply it by that whole thing. I haven't actually done this in my calculator yet. So 0.2 times 6 times, divided by 24 times 0.5 times 60 times 60. And we end up getting a kinetic energy of also 90 joules. So you can do it both ways. Um, this second way is a like one more step. 
but it's, I mean, it's not a huge deal. Um, but you can see that we can use the work kinetic energy theorem. We can also use just our kinetic energy equation, but we have to do a little algebraic manipulation, set those, those torque equations equal to each other in order to find an equation for our rotational inertia because we don't know what mass is.